Lesson 8, a famous monastery. In this text, we'll talk about a monastery. Now listen to the text and answer this question. What are the St. Bernard dogs used for? St. Bernard 修道院的狗是用来做什么的? The Great St. Bernard Pass connects Switzerland to Italy. At 2,470 meters, it is the highest mountain pass in Europe. The famous monastery of St. Bernard, which was founded in the 11th century, lies about a mile away. For hundreds of years, St. Bernard dogs have saved the lives of travelers crossing the dangerous pass. These friendly dogs, which were first brought from Asia, were used as watchdogs even in Roman times. Now that a tunnel has been built through the mountains, the pass is less dangerous. But each year, the dogs are still sent out into the snow whenever a traveler is in difficulty. Despite the new tunnel, there are still a few people who rashly attempt to cross the pass on foot. During the summer months, the monastery is very busy for it is visited by thousands of people who cross the pass in cars. As there are so many people about, the dogs have to be kept in a special enclosure. In winter, however, life at the monastery is quite different. The temperature drops to minus 30 degrees, and very few people attempt to cross the pass. The monks prefer winter to summer for they have more privacy. The dogs have greater freedom too, for they are allowed to wander outside their enclosure. The only regular visitors to the monastery in winter are parties of skiers who go there at Christmas and Easter. These young people, who love the peace of the mountains, always receive a warm welcome at St. Bernard's Monastery. So, what are the St. Bernard dogs used for? Yes, they are used to rescue travelers who get into difficulties in the mountains. The Monastery of St. Bernard. 但是他首先向我们介绍了这个修道院的地理位置。历史背景，然后才跟我们讲了修道院里头狗的用途。注意课文里有一个非常有趣的事情，这个修道院并不是与世隔绝的，它反而是一个旅游胜地。It's a tourist attraction. 修道院里无论是修道士还是狗，都非常欢迎旅游者的到来，而且在必要的时候，他们还会向旅游者伸出援助的手。但是在旅游淡季的时候,他们在安静的生活中也依然自责。Okay, now we'll look at some language points in the text. 首先看课文的标题,A famous monastery. Monastery当然是修道院的意思。在英文中表示修道院还有convent,nunnery这两个字。他们有什么区别吗? Convent 跟 nunnery 里边是 nuns 就是说指的是女修道院 而 monastery 里边是 monks 是修道士 The Great St. Bernard Pass connects Switzerland to Italy 这里 pass 这个字表示一个非常难走的地方的通道或者通路 Connect to 是指把这两个国家连在一起 可以跟connect这个动词一起使用的介词还有 with 或者我们也可以说 connect one thing and the other The famous monastery lies about a mile away Lie在这里表示位置 I'll give you some more examples he was lying on his back, 就是他仰面躺着。The town lies in a valley, 
这个小镇呢，在一个山谷里边。或者 ，his real interest lies in music. 他真正的兴趣在于音乐。注意 ，lie 的过去式是 lay， 过去分词是 lane。Now that a tunnel has been built through the mountains, the pass is less dangerous. Now that, 这里的意思是，既然现在已经修好了一个隧道。Now that 是口气有点弱的，表示因果的一种说法。For example, now that you've grown up, I can tell you about it. 现在既然你已经长大了，我就可以告诉你这件事情了。课文里表示因果关系的还有其他的字。As there are so many people about, the dogs have to be kept in a special enclosure. 还有 ，the monastery is very busy, for it is visited by thousands of people. The monks prefer winter to summer, for they have more privacy. The dogs have greater freedom, for they are allowed to wander. 那么注意 ，for 跟 because 的意思是一样的，它的口气要比 as 强烈。as 在这里表示因果的时候，可以用 since 来替换。Despite the new tunnel, there are still a few people who rashly attempt to cross the pass on foot. 我们来看看 despite 的用法。Despite 等于 in spite of. 比如在这句话中 ，Despite the bad weather, they went out as planned. Despite 就可以用 in spite of the bad weather 来替换。Despite 后边还可以跟一个从句。比如 ，She went to the party despite the fact that the doctor had told her to rest. 尽管医生让他休息，他还是去参加晚会了。Despite 后边还可以加 doing something. He had a big lunch despite having just had breakfast. 刚刚吃过早饭，他的午饭又吃了很多。这里是用 despite having. Rashly， 很鲁莽的做什么事情。它的近义词是 boldly。跟它意思相反的呢，谨慎的 ，cautiously. The dogs have to be kept in a special enclosure. Enclosure 是指用围墙或者护栏圈起来的一块地方。Be kept in a special enclosure. 这里用 be kept 来表达狗不能随便出去走动的意思。Be kept. 还可以跟其他表示限定性的名词使用，比如 be kept in hospital， 或者 be kept in prison， 或者必须在室内待着 be kept indoors。The monks prefer winter to summer, for they have more privacy. Privacy 我们一般翻译成隐私，但是在这里实际上是表示 being alone。很安静的一种生活。Look at these two examples. An individual's right to privacy should be protected. 这句话里 ，privacy 就是隐私的意思。I need some privacy to finish my paper. 是说我需要有一些安静来写完我这篇论文。这里 ，privacy 跟课文是同样的意思。The dogs have greater freedom, for they are allowed to wander outside their enclosure. Wander 的意思是没有目的的、没有目标的闲逛。跟它意思相近的字有 roam 或者 ramble. The only regular visitors to the monastery in winter are parties of skiers. Party. 这里就是 a large group of 的意思，一大群人的意思。我们很熟悉 party 当做晚会讲 ，for example a birthday party。party 当然还有政党的意思 
，比如工党就叫 the Labour Party。课文里的 party 指的一群人，这个例子里也是一样 ，a party of tourists， 一群旅游者。What about this one? The two parties involved in the dispute. 这里 party 指的是在争论中卷入的双方。最后，我想强调一下，这篇课文有很多地方描述到位置，所以希望大家注意介词和副词是如何来描述位置的。For example, the Great Saint Bernard Pass connects Switzerland to Italy. 这里用介词 to 就表示了把这个两个国家相连的。地理位置。At 2,473 meters, it is the highest mountain pass in Europe. 一个介词 at 就告诉了我们这个山峰的高度。Now that a tunnel has been built through the mountains, through 表示穿过山峰。The dogs are still sent out into the snow. 这狗被派往雪地里。还有 ，there are so many people about。这里 about 是说 around the monastery 的意思。Right, so much about the language points in the text。关于课文的语言点，我们就讲解到这儿。Now, before I finish this text， 在我们这一课结束之前 ，I want to talk about。Docks. 这篇课文虽然讲的是一个修道院，但是修道院里的狗起了一个非常重要的作用。它甚至能挽救人的生命。就像我们在英文中经常说的 ，Dogs are man's best friends. 狗呢是人类最好的朋友。这种用来挽救人的生命的狗，英文中叫做 watch dogs。狗当然还有其他的种类，比如说。Pet dogs, 用来做宠物的狗，跟它相对是 wild dogs， 野狗。它的用途呢，还可以是 hunting dogs， 猎狗，或者是警犬，叫 police dogs。因为狗跟人类生活的关系如此密切，我们发现语言里和狗相关的词汇也很多。我在这里只给大家举两个例子，比如。Dog-eared books. 这里头就是用狗耳朵来形容很旧的、卷了边的书角，或者 doggy bag， 指的就是在饭馆里吃不掉东西时打的包。还有一些谚语，比如说我们可以讲 ，barking dogs do not bite， 叫的凶的狗并不咬人。还有中文里所说的爱屋及乌。英文中可以这样表达 ：Love me, love my dog. All right. So much about the dogs. 关于狗，我们就讲到这儿。So much about this lesson as well. 这一课我们也讲到这儿。See you in next lesson.